everyone. Welcome back to the Solutions Lab. I am Chris Phillips. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Today, we're here to talk about Samsung IFP and how they can help you transform the teaching and learning experience. To do that, I've got a special guest, uh, Dee Lanier. Dee is a education coach with Samsung. Dee, how's it going? Things are fantastic. Happy Friday's Eve to everyone. Friday Eve, my kids are off tomorrow, so it's their Friday. They're going to be stoked when they get home. But they've been <laughs> at school learning and, 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 and receiving great teaching, so hopefully we can learn some more about how we can better that experience for our kids as we Absolutely. go forward. Absolutely. Uh, but before we get started, I do want to kind of give uh, the viewers a little bit of a, a rundown of how the dashboard works uh, for this broadcast. If you have any questions uh, throughout this broadcast, you can go ahead and ask them in the box that I just highlighted. If you also just wanna go into the, the questions and answer box right now and just kind of give a shout out where you're from, uh, your name and where you're from, uh, be great to kind of see where you guys are all watching us from. Uh, we also do have a couple of resources, a DNH webpage and a link to uh, 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 the uh, D, one of these books, uh, which we'll talk about in a couple seconds. Uh, if you're interested in kind of uh, getting more information on that, it's available on our resources as well. Uh, but without further ado, uh, I am going to kick it over to you, Dee, to kind of get started. Great. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, well, it is great to see everyone here. And Chris, do me a favor. Just shout out anything in the Q&A that seems like I've missed it, because I want to be very responsive to you all. Yep. Uh, make sure that I'm not only just showing you things that exist on the Samsung interactive display, but really stopping, pausing, answering questions, um, and having this time be interactive. Uh, one of the big things I often say uh, when bringing an interactive display into a classroom setting, now you have an interactive display, we need to reimagine what does it look like to have interaction with this display, uh, not the technology just taking over in that regard. Um, so thank you again for that introduction. My name is Dee Lanier. I am a Samsung education coach. I'm also a published author and speaker. Uh, currently, the latest book that I've published uh, is with my great friend, Ken Shelton. It's The Promises and Perils of AI in Education. And I highlight that specific book because some of the things that we're going to be showing today revolves around AI. It's the hot new topic, right? It's the thing that's been discussed since uh, chat GPT hit the scene in November of 2022. And we are in many ways still trying to figure out what are the best ways to utilize AI tools and what are some of the pitfalls we need to avoid. And so not only does the book address that, there are ways in which Samsung has been attempting to address that and really particularize the ways in which we utilize AI in an education environment with interactive display. So I would love to share with you all some of those things. And again, um, I really want to be able to pause and answer any questions if you have any at any point. Um, so the Samsung interactive display that I'm showing you today is our WAD. It is a full Android experience. It is EDLA compliant. And we also have some goodies packed under the hood with this beta updated firmware that I have on my display. So be on the lookout for some of the goodies I show you concerning that really soon. Um, but if you're looking for a, a really quick outline, you know, what are we talking about? Where are we going with this time? I'm going to share with you ways in which we are utilizing AI and education now in our interactive display. And then what are some of the things that are coming very soon in our beta features? And then how are we envisioning things uh, in the future? What are some of the things that we're looking forward to integrating? And how are we also just listening to the educator community to ensure that what we are integrating within our interactive displays are the things that matter most to teaching and learning. All right, so let's talk about some of those features that exist now. Uh, I am going to screen share actually this screen. So I'm over here live on this screen and um, some of the things that we have built into the interactive display are things that may already be familiar. They are things that sometimes once things have moved past brand new to something that we are used to, we stop thinking of them as AI. They're just regular stuff now. But in many ways, I want to remind that uh, some of the features that we utilize in our interactive display, uh, they're actually artificial intelligence. Um, so one of them is, uh, is just handwriting recognition, which may seem like a small thing, 
but it's actually very, very significant for at least a couple of reasons. One, it's you can always have the substitute teacher, that was me, in a setting in which they were not necessarily trained in. Again, that was me. I was a high school teacher walking into an elementary school, and I would I have to be corrected by the kids to, to not, you know, write my A's, you know, like that, right? They would have to correct me and say, no, Mr. Linear, you're supposed to do your A's like that. I'm like, okay, well, that's not how I normally do my A's, but... You know, so if I'm just doing handwriting, and again, in an elementary school setting, it is super important that the teacher writes uh, slowly and legibly, and in high school, by the, that point, and you all know from college experience, it seems to get thrown completely out of the window, uh, but this isn't legible, it's not readable uh, to the students, and if the whole point is to make learning visible, then we want to do things that uh, help improve that, right? It's, it's simple, it's small, but it is significant in a classroom setting. So those are one of the features we wanna to highlight to teachers. And you may think of it, okay, cool, that's, that's, uh, that's not that big of a deal. But for teachers that are recognizing the significance of that, it's a huge deal. Another reason why that might be very helpful in, in, in a classroom environment is just creating a, a tutor, if you will, for teaching a student and building their fine motor skills in their handwriting and it can become a, a small thing to say if the computer can't read your handwriting then neither can i and so instead of a, a teacher constantly correcting a student and saying no you need to work on this you need to work on that and it feels like uh, another human is is berating them so to speak instead they are just trying to work on their handwriting in a way that the computer can recognize it, right? So there's at least a couple of different ways in which small thing, but AI being integrated within the technology is something that we wanna highlight. Uh, an another thing is uh, there's another, like there's a whole toolbar that's here, small thing, but significant, it helps in uh, teacher efficiency, if I wrote something, and then I just want to search directly from here. So if I'm using a note app, and then I circle and then search, whether it was the transformed handwriting or even my bad, my bad handwriting, uh, this becomes now something that is simple uh, that I can utilize, right, within the classroom setting. So now I can look up whatever I am around that thing that I'm searching. Um, I can also then use additional tools if I wanted to. Maybe I want to take a picture of this uh, and insert it back into my notes and that will happen. But again, small things, but very useful, practical, hopeful, efficiency things. Uh, so now we're building and layering skills with technology and so uh, I'm able to do those things. And those are things that I may not have been able to do just three, four years ago, because technology uh, has, has advanced and we've built in this artificial intelligence to read what it probably could not read before and uh, be able to integrate those things. Um, there's there's uh, small things again, it's one thing to attempt to uh, draw a shape. It's another thing just to say, you know what, I'm just going to make a render and it's going to make the shape for me, right? So that is actually artificial intelligence, recognizing what shape you are attempting to draw and then replicate it. Small things, but great things in my opinion. Um, there's also the ability to uh, do more than just simple, uh, shape recognition, but maybe I want to go back to my pen, I'm going to go to write, and I'm going to use this magic draw feature. And so if I was attempting to draw a house or sketch a house or something like that, uh, maybe most kids would recognize, yeah, I think he's trying to draw a house. Um, but if I use the magic wand on this tip here, and then I do this, notice that it's recognizing what I'm attempting to draw and there we go. So this creates a uh, efficiency for teachers to be able to demonstrate maybe something that they're wanting to symbolize and do that very quickly and easily using the stylus on the interactive display and uh, using that magic draw feature.
So those are some of the things that exist right now. Uh, with our AI integration within the interactive display. I'm curious if there are any questions before we move on. There hasn't been any questions specifically from the chat. I did actually have a question when you were talking about the handwriting. How does yeah. it determine uh, what the font size is supposed to be? Is it based off the size of the, the writing it's, um, it's trying that's to? A, that's a fantastic question. And when once you started off, your question was, how does it? You lost me because it's artificial intelligence. I don't know how any of this works. It's kind of magic to me. Um, but let's let's uh, let's see if I were to. Oh, I'm still in the magic, right? Ha ha ha. Um, so let's let's see if we try this live. I'm still in the magic, right? Because I still I had it on the pen there. I mean, on my handwriting, not on the pen. So let's say if I were to write my name really really large here, and then select and then say smart right yeah it made it it made it, it seems like as big mm -hmm. as however i wrote it but also notice that i can always resize it okay rodney would like to know if it also works for chris of handwriting mm, i have experimented with cursive and it seems to be hit or miss pretty interesting though how uh it most schools aren't using cursive anymore mm -hmm. i actually don't love that but I don't love that either. <laughs> right. Uh, let's let's see. Got it. Bingo. It was your answer, Rodney. The reason why I, said I think it's hit or miss is because I think that some people's uh, cursive handwriting is is it's very non-traditional, right? Oh, I think that... I'm sure it would have a problem with mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not the software that's a, that's a me issue that's a human <laughs> that's a issue. issue yeah <laughs> any other question nope that's it for now that's it okay oh um, well i cannot just um i cannot overstate how those are things that exist right now and and they're great um they are things that the teacher once they become very comfortable with using those tools. They use them on a regular basis. And then they're reimagining ways in which they can continue to create interactivity with their students using technology. And again, because we've gotten used to those forms of AI probably over the last three or four years with the use of our cell phones and tablets, uh, we kind of not think of them as the future anymore. We're like, oh yeah, yeah, we've been doing that, but it is, it is important to note that that is a form of art artificial intelligence. That is machine learning. Um, but then when we get into, well, what are some of the things that are just like really advanced uh, and how can we utilize AI to do some things that we maybe have not even thought of in the past as a use case? Uh, we have some things, some tricks up our sleeve, uh, some things that we are um, working on and I am more than willing to show you all a couple of those things if you're willing to bear with me. And let's make sure that we, uh, we do this together. Okay, so uh, I used to be a high school business teacher and oftentimes, unfortunately, uh, there would be sections that I would have to go into long explanations of concepts and students would have to copy notes and then we would have to then discuss whether or not they really understood the concepts of the, or the material, and then we'd have to go back. Um, I say the unfortunate part is it felt very much like traditional standard instruction, and that could put kids to sleep, uh, it, and or there's just busy work in the book, and so we're always trying to think, how can we reinforce the learning in new creative ways? Uh, well, one of the things that we've built into some of our future upcoming uh, software, they, we have something that's called the AI Class Assistant. And right now I'm using uh, one of our partner's remotes that has a built-in microphone. This is the Merlin remote, just letting you know, everything I'm showing you right now is currently in beta. And we are using this partner remote because it has a tap to trigger microphone. Now I do have another partner soundbar with webcam, so it does have a microphone, but currently the software does not have a button just to trigger the use of the mic. 
So that's why we're using this. So I'm just giving that disclaimer. Now Merlin does do some really, really cool things, but it also requires a subscription. So we are aiming to build this product so that it's compatible with Merlin, but not necessarily dependent upon it. So with that, um, I am going to hold on to this button so that it will hopefully show me. Now I'm transcription in progress. That's very important from a teacher's standpoint for it to be known that I am now actually recording or I have the capability of recording. Uh, schools, education, educators have uh, a couple of different rules that they have to be very mindful of, COPA and FERPA. They have to be super mindful so that we're not just always recording. If you consider like uh, any assistant, AI assistant that you may have for home use, it's literally always listening and it's listening for whatever trigger word that you may say. I'm not gonna say either of those words that are likely in your house or in your office um, in order to then be responsive to you. Well, in that particular case, in a classroom context, you have to be super careful that that's not something that is just always recording because there's personal identifiable information that could be a conflict uh, with those FERPA and COPA compliances. So now I at least visibly say, see something that says transcription in progress. Um, and then now I can press this microphone and it should capture uh, some of the things I'll say. Let, let me think. Um, okay, so one of my favorite chapters uh, when I taught business was uh, chapter four, where we talk about business ethics. So uh, I'll just give that quick little discourse. And so there are three things that you need to consider uh, as it pertains to ethics in business. Actually, individuals have the same responsibility to consider uh, making sure that whatever you're doing is not against the law, is number one. Number two is making sure that it is nothing that you would want someone to do to you. And then thirdly, is to consider the long-term over the short-term gain. And so law, me, long-term is the way in which I would teach that to my students. Um, well, you can see here, it's part of the limitation of the Merlin remote as we are testing this, the Merlin remote will only capture 30 second snippets, but we are building this out so that it can transcribe much longer. So if you can consider uh, what this does in an education context. It does a ton of things. Uh, it, it can allow students to focus on the words as they're being transcribed as I'm speaking them, right? So uh, that is an accommodation for students maybe who have uh, a disability re related to hearing. So it's doing that. It's also another thing in education that is super prominent is um, students having individual education plans that are written. Those are called IEPs. And part of their IEP may be that they need to have notes that go home with them. And so uh, teachers can spend hours, when I say hours, I mean literally hours upon hours in creating their own notes to send home to students. And when our tool, when it's not beta, um, what it will do is, is, is create those, those uh, summaries for you. And then also to be able to do a formative test. Matter of fact, I have a short video that I can share with you all um, that Dr. Micah Shippey, who uh, demonstrated this live in a different setting, I'll let him explain it. very early on, uh, but we really want schools to see our innovation and our innovative process that's related to amplifying good classroom practice. So what I'm going to share with you is where we are with this product right now, planning on rolling it out in January. So this is really early. We're showing it live. We showed it at Infocom, largely to a higher ed audience. They loved it. We saw MIT. We saw UCLA. We saw Harvard. We saw Old Dominion. They loved it. And because college professors generally don't like to be trained. So if it's super easy to pick up, low adoption curve, we're building something pretty awesome. It takes the complexity out of AI. Uh, we're working with a partnership right now with Merlin. So Merlin is a product many of you know about. The Merlin product, we're using it largely for the microphone and some of the voice activation features. Uh, for example, you see right here I have transcription open. I'm going to turn that off. That transcription that's open is for the Samsung to work. 
Do you see it's off now? I think that's critical that an educator knows that that's on. It makes them feel better. It's like, is your, is your webcam on or not? There's a lot of post-its in education classrooms over those webcams, because we're not sure. All right, so transcription's on. What's gonna happen here, live and in front of you, because nothing ever goes wrong with a live demo, is, is three things. The subject matter expert, that's me. My slide deck that I've been using for many years, a simple Google slide, and the generative AI are gonna come together to create something really powerful for the classroom. You ready for a live demo? Yeah. What could go wrong? Right. <laughs> so today we're talking about frogs. I think frogs are amazing. I'm not sure if there's any frogs in Denver because it gets super cold here. Maybe they have salamanders or toads, which are other forms of frogs. I do know that frogs are found in other places like Colombia, Belize, Ecuador. I think frogs are pretty amazing, don't you? Absolutely. More importantly, it didn't pick up you. That's pretty good, right? Perfect and Copa compliance, it's just the author. All right, now this right here is super brief. If I'm giving a lecture, it's gonna be a little bit longer for children, of course. Now it's gonna take this data that I've been using for years, I'm super comfortable with it. It's going to add it to my transcription. The generative AI model is using my transcription as the priority data. So I talked about Denver, and if all the moons are aligned, we'll see Denver brought up. Denver is not in this slide deck. So right now it's generating a live class summary. It's meant to look like an academic article, helping prepare students with for a higher ed uh, journals that they'll be looking at. So you've got the author, that would be their account, keywords, vocabulary of course, and then we have titles being developed live right now for the students. Now in a good classroom process, this, this is not enough. I could click share and I could send it out to my favorite LMS but a good teacher wants to check for content retention before they do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump to my quiz. This is our generative AI model. So this is all Samsung working behind the scenes. It's generating a quiz right now. Now, as a classroom teacher of 22 years, let me tell you, making multiple choice wrong answers is a pain in the neck. So having somebody else do it for you saves you a significant amount of time. So here we have uh, all these answers, and look at number five. Which of the following is a possible reason why frogs might not be found in Denver? I talked about Denver. Denver is not in this slide deck. So now I want to check for, for knowledge retention. So I'm going to pull up one of our existing features called Air Class. It's a hover tool. Uh, Air Class is a simple classroom response system where I might join with a QR code or I might join with the link. This allows us to ask students questions and say, okay, let's look at number five. What do you think? Well, out of these choices, why might frogs not be in Denver? I'll hit begin, the students will take a minute to reply, I'll hit finish, and I'll get a bar graph showing all the results. Now, a good classroom teacher does not go one and done, we're all set, because they likely are not gonna have 100% response rate. If they do not have 100% respons response rate, a good teacher's gonna go back to the transcript and unpack more about that specific question that students struggled with to generate a brand new class summary. The class summary also fulfills one of the number one IEP requirements in the United States, that's individual education plans, and that is a copy of notes. But this copy of notes. All right, and I'm gonna stop there because uh, obviously you see some repeats of some of the things that I said about IEPs, uh, individual education plans, and how uh, some of the AI features that we are building in are intentional in uh, ensuring that we are creating accommodations for students with different disabilities and learning needs. And so that is really the focus of some of the AI tools that we are currently in beta testing, uh, continuing to get feedback from some of our most precious partners, which are teachers uh, in classrooms as they get to experiment and, and give us feedback on some of the things that we are building. And the goal is, is by January that we will launch um, some of these AI tools uh, and that they will be pushed to the WADs that are already out in the field. That is the goal. So again, I am pausing to see if there are questions because I know I showed some things and we watched that quick video uh, to show that demo happening there. Uh, there weren't any specific questions on, on, on that one. 
Do you have any, Chris? Uh, I've seen that demo before. Uh, oh, okay. I, so every time, it. every time I see that demo, I'm blown away, and also um, a little jealous of the kids that are in school right now, because uh, yeah. I, I just feel like it provides uh, such a uh, more interactive learning experience where where uh, a teacher is able to just not worry so much about like like uh, uh, the good doctor said on that video, what the wrong answers on a multiple choice question for just basic knowledge retention is uh right it, it makes it so much easier for the teachers to be able to just focus on the content of their curriculum rather than the the little absolutely. nuts and bolts of it, the classroom absolutely you think about all kinds of different ways in which you're interacting with kids even if doing that and the ai will get better just like all ai tends to be getting better right and it'll get better at learning uh you as you are speaking also just like we were talking about earlier with the handwriting uh, recognition there's the ability for you to recognize wait a minute maybe i speak too fast as the teacher mm -hmm. as a teacher maybe i'm speaking at a pace or maybe i'm not enunciating my words in such a way that the computer can understand me so maybe i need to slow down and speak at a place at a pace and enunciate my words so that it is more clear for the transcription. Well, my attempts in doing that is actually helping the students who are listening to me speak, right? right. So the, the combination of me being helped in that regard and visually what is being transcribed also helping students as they are processing information. I see Rodney had a question. Yeah, Rod Rodney uh, had a question. It was about, go ahead. Yeah, and I'm curious about how is AI going to change the validation of content? Hmm. I don't want to misinterpret that question, uh, but I do consider here is the reality. The reality is, is that we've been in the information age for now um, uh, at least a decade and a half, right? And what we are constantly doing is aiming to push our students to be able to not only search online, to validate information online, but to also uh, be good digital sleuths and be able to recognize what is valid information which is versus what is invalid information. So we are actually helping build students in their research skills. I know that it can be a controversial statement, but I welcome at least I would have uh, if I was still in the classroom, uh, but I welcome students to cross check any things that I am saying and or even maybe what the text may say because there's always new information that may need to be validated. And so having a community of, well, I just read, okay, well, what was the source of that? Okay, let's do some of that research together. That's where we can now jump on, literally jump on the same board and look to see uh, what is being said and what sources are those things coming from and then really aim to validate the information. So I see it as part of a win in education in particular, where teachers are supposed to be learning in community with students. And now this is another uh, way in which to validate information. Right. And then the, I kind think of the demo. AI... Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying, in the, in the demo you showed, uh, I, I believe it was you, you said it or, or was in the video, that, that, that that's the, the lecture that was given in front of the class that was spoken into the microphone uh, was the primary source of which the AI is actually looking to create all the other content for it. So I, I, I doubt you'll cool. see the AI go rogue and just start adding information that you weren't aware of or do you didn't intend to be in your um, right. in your uh, lesson plan. Uh, however, you know, you know, D, it looks like it takes a couple minutes to do this. You could easily right. run through your lesson plan prior to the class actually happening. See, make sure the AI is not going to throw any curveballs at you and, and then be able to deliver it properly. Right, right. Um, and we're, we're always learning in real time. I will say that yeah. we are also utilizing um, an LLM that is custom and uh, really is built and developed for the sake of an education or for education academic environment. Um, and so we are really closing in those parameters to ensure that it's not just scraping the internet broadly and just pulling in whatever, 
Uh, and it's also not hallucinating, right? And just making yeah. up things. And so exactly what you said, Chris, it is going to use my words as its primary source. Also, one of the things that you saw in the video that we are working on um, is, is the ability for me as the teacher to be able to also point to something else that is an input, maybe it's just the reference, internal yeah. browser, as the primary, as a secondary reference point to say, if you are scraping data, I want you to scrape it from my words and from this slide deck and yeah. or this PDF or what have you, and then create a summary that's also on the reading level of my students and let's do some quick formative assessment based on that information that we have uh, been discussing in class. Uh, I don't think AI, again, this is the truth for pretty much anything you talk about. AI, AI is never going to take people's jobs in that, like, it'll just create a lesson plan for you. The teachers, they're not needed for lessons plans anymore. Blah. No, they still are. But the AI does take a lot of, like we've, we've talked about earlier, the monotonous what's the wrong answer I can put on a retention quiz here? How do I put these notes together so I can get it over to my IEP kids? It takes that stuff away from the teacher so they can just focus on their job. Yeah, that feels like a great little promo for my book. Just read, read my book. We go into the I, philosophical I, you know, a lot more. <laughs> you know, available in the resources. Take a look, guys. <laughs> I'll, I'll, take um, a, I'll take a commission on any sales made today. <laughs> Well, um, and again, any questions that come, I'm happy to be responsive to them. Um, also, speaking of being philosophical, let's talk about AI and some of the future, some of the future outlook in which we are looking to integrate many of the AI tools that exist, uh, maybe for consumer purposes and bringing them into uh, education and classroom context, right? So if you wouldn't mind, just use your imagination a little bit with me um, and consider uh, how might we utilize AI to really foster creativity in the classroom, right? Not just recognize shapes that I am attempting to draw or um, short little sketches that I'm trying to doodle, but really to help prompt me in creating something uh, unique. Uh, how can AI be used for that? Um, I'm curious, any of you who have a Samsung phone, if you have Galaxy AI on your phone, maybe there are some tools that you are aware of that exist here that you think, hmm, what would that look like and how might that be helpful there, right? Uh, consider Samsung's commitment to accessibility. So I mentioned it before and I'll say it again, you consider ways in which uh, students may have different uh, disabilities and or in, in, in my case, like I have a I have visual processing issues. Um, so how might tools that were created for accessibility also be incredibly helpful if they are integrated within our interactive display uh, so think about not only uh, things that are audio, like talkback, things that are visual, which you've seen, live transcription, uh, but there is so much more that we want to bring in as, uh, as a highlight for accessibility purposes. And probably most relevant in the education setting is how might we utilize AI for literacy and numeracy skill development? So again, I can't give away any spoilers, um, but if you can consider any of the AI tools that you have seen integrated on a consumer product and your imagination could go there, huh, that would be kind of interesting within a classroom context. What would that look like to be on a large board with a note and if the teacher was annotating that sort of thing and it were to develop something as a product at the end, how might that be helpful not only to the teacher, but potentially also for the student and helping them in their learning? These are all things that Samsung is currently working on and also processing with educators to, to prioritize what seems to be most important for us to push uh, sooner than later. All right, so I see another question. Is AI accessing the content that is found when using Google Scholar? Uh, so Ronnie, I, I actually do not know the exact answer to the LLM and where it's getting all of its primary data from. 
That is an excellent question. I, mean, I should find the answer. Any other questions? Does not look like it so far. Guys, again, right. again, feel free to ask any questions while D is going, and we will get them out to yeah. him. Yeah. It's probably also worth stating that there are a number of applications that exist that are already doing things uh, that are designed for an education setting, and there are schools and districts that have, you know, given permission. In some cases, they have um, purchase products, right, to have access to their tools. And we want to make this board compatible with those tools that the teachers are already using as well. And so whether they be a mobile app and anything that can be downloaded directly from the Google Play Store or are pushed from the admin from our um, device management system in order to have those applications accessible there, you can do that. Uh, if they are web-based tools and if they require uh, any form of input, so if that's handwriting input, of course, that's right there. If it requires any form of voice input, you can plug any third-party mic into this board, any webcam. Um, most modern document cameras also have a microphone built in, and so these are these are additional uh, tools that teachers already have, and we like to highlight this. This board was made for expandability, uh, and so you can plug in typically all, whatever you already have and then use it with those other tools. And our job, meaning the, the Samsung education team, is really to come in and help remind teachers of the tools that they already have and then this additional tool and how they work together. So that is our commitment in not only just giving them a new piece of hardware um, but also reminding them of the software that they have and ways in which they can reimagine, again, that interactivity between uh, student, teacher, and technology. All right, well, that's all I have from a formal presentation standpoint, but I am more than happy to be responsive to questions. If Chris wants to throw me new curveballs, I'm happy to uh, attempt to hit any of those. I'm also more than happy to screen share and uh, show anything that may need just a second iteration. No, no curveballs for my end. I'll keep uh, I'll keep it easy on you there. Um, yeah, we'll we'll give a. a a uh, minute or two here to, to if anyone has any additional questions we'll go through those um if, before we kind of uh, get to any last minute questions uh where can people reach out to you if they have any questions if they're watching this on demand or viewing this kind of after the fact uh, how can yeah. they get hold of you? so i i tend to be uh easily found um i don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing if you were to <laughs> google search my name i'm easy to find uh, but you see my email address right here uh, d.lanier at partner.samsung.com. Um, I am also on the socials on LinkedIn as well as on Twitter. Um, so I'm easy to find if if it's just wanting to ask more questions about AI uh, and of course Samsung Interactive Display or how we are um, bringing those two things together for the betterment of teaching and learning. Yeah, Rodney is 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 asking how is it this help for accessibility for the blind uh, right is there so that's some that of, helps with that yeah. yeah that's that's excellent that's that's some of the where i was saying some of the tools that we are aiming to integrate more in the future uh is accessibility and we're really asking teachers a lot of how do we do that best right mm -hmm. so uh some of it is is having to consider our imagination a little bit um because if you consider Right now, if I am teaching from the front of the classroom, this is my display. And if I have a student who has a hearing disability, the problem that we're trying to solve is, is attempting to make sure that that student can hear my voice, right? So we're doing that as well as maybe those class notes, those class summaries, how could they audio playback uh, those notes? So one of the things, it's a small thing, but it's a reminder again that we give to teachers 
Um, some, sometimes it's not about building something new or developing something new. It's just showing how we use what we have and then using it more effectively. So uh, let's say if I had one of these, try to find one of my older transcripts up here. Uh, and then, you know, I had these, these class notes. One of the things that's, that's uh, fun, simple, and easy to do is for me to share these notes. And if I share these notes to my student, uh, whether it be to a whole class or if I send it to a particular group in Google Classroom, if I need to email those class notes to a particular student, they then have those notes. And then also, um, let's be honest, we know that 80% of all students in uh, U.S. schools are, have Chromebooks. And so we want to make sure that, that that student, once they have those notes, uh, that they also know how to use the audio playback um, uh, feature on their Chromebook. And so in many ways, we're also trying just to think, how do we bridge between the technology that we have in the front of the room to the technology that the student may have uh, as their one-to-one -one device? And so whether that's a tablet uh, or a laptop, it's ensuring that they know how to access what I've now sent to them and then how to play that back audibly. So again, our coaching team really aims to try and solve some of those problems just by thinking about what are all the variables happening here. And I hope that yeah, I, adequately answers your question. Yeah, and one of the most exciting things I've seen, especially with the the um, proliferation of AI just kind of going into everything is, is AI starting to take things that were traditionally accessibility features only and start to turning turning them into productivity features. Uh, the 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 key one would be um, uh, on current Windows devices and and, and most uh, Android devices as well. You can uh, open up a feature which is uh, basically live captions. If it hears audio on the device, it will take that English audio and create English text. Uh, what you're seeing now through AI is instead of just being able to do uh, English speech to English text, if it hears Spanish, it then translates that to English. And with that point also, yeah. again, since we're using our imagination now and considering what are ways in which we can be most accessible to students with the use of the technology that we have, but then prioritize what is most important. So one of the things that we have discussed is, is what would it look like for a teacher to be able to say something in a certain language and it to be able to uh, be accessible to the multiple languages that might be represented within their yeah. classroom, right? So again, we're trying to ask, answer the question, is that something that we do from up front or is that something that we do that we push towards those devices that the students have and then ensure that that device is able to do that? We're still trying to consider how do we not just create something which is an overlap, but how do we also just integrate with whatever the students have? And so uh, we might be using a form of AI here. The students may have on their device another form of AI, and then we want to make sure that they bridge together so that they can learn the best. Awesome. Well, I think that's going to do it for the, for the questions here today. Dee, thank you so much for your time. Well, well, well. Incredibly uh, educational. Uh, learning more about what uh, Samsung IFPs have to offer, not only today, but what we'll be seeing from them in the future. It gets me really excited uh, to be able to kind of start building out solutions, uh, kind of thinking about what is now and what the future will hold as well. So uh, it's great to, to, to be able to do that. Any final thoughts before we kind of close things out? Yeah, I just really want to say I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you, Rodney, so much for asking such uh, great and insightful questions. Thank you all for uh, just being here, being present with us, and really do hope that you consider how Samsung uh, as a product and then how our entire education coaching team can support you in supporting this, the teachers that are out there that are really serving our kids. And if you're watching this uh, uh, on demand, uh, you can always reach out to, to D at the contact information he provided. You can also reach out to our, our technical group at DNH, tech solutions at dnh.com. Happy to answer any questions as well. If we don't know the answers, we'll obviously get it over to D and uh, get it to the expert. Um, we have a variety of different live broadcasts coming up. Uh, please keep your eyes on uh, dnh.com slash TV and dnh.com slash solutions lab for more information on those broadcasts when they become available. But thank you so much for joining us here today and uh, hope you guys all have a wonderful afternoon.